starting with is a piece of mixed media paper. Um, so it's basically a really heavy duty paper, so watercolour card, whatever you want to call it. But this is called mixed media paper, uh, which just means it takes a lot more sort of stuff um, on it. Uh, it's about A4 size. Of course, you can do this type of thing on a smaller scale, on a bigger scale, whatever you want to do. Uh, what I've done is I've got some random bits that I think will go together. And um, I'm going to make, just make a inky mess as such. Um, if you can hear me, if you can just say hello so I know you can hear me. Uh, I'm going to just check. Just say hello. So oh, can hear yep. Me. You might have heard me talking. I unmuted myself uh, so I could hear. Right, I am giving this a coat of gesso. Now, my gesso has gone extremely thick. And it wasn't, wasn't this thick when I bought it. It's gone. You can buy different uh, thicknesses of gesso. Um, hi, Joan. How are you? Um, you can buy different thicknesses of gesso. I tend to not go for a thick one, but over time, as the water evaporates, it gets thicker anyway. So you can give it a spritz to, um, you know, make it a little bit more fluid. Uh, you can put it on with a wet brush to make it a bit fluid. You can spritz some water into your pot and give it a mixed round. Uh, or you can leave it thicker. I quite like it thicker because what I tend to do is as I'm putting it on pieces like this, I tend to let it get, not so much in this project, but I don't know if you can see there. You see where you can see the marks? I tend to let it sort of gain these mar marks and hold and keep the marks just because it adds a bit more um, texture and interest. And you will find that when you add inks and paints and things like that, they'll get caught in them pieces so they'll it's not just that they create a, a subtle bit of texture and interest but you'll find that when colors get caught in it it really sort of can add to a project okay so i'm just giving this a cover now probably for the project that i've got in mind that i'm going to do i possibly didn't really need um actually i shouldn't have washed my brush off yet because i'm going to paint use it again um I probably shouldn't of, or didn't need to put gesso on it, but I have. And the reason is not because the paper necessarily needs that primer. I've done it because, like I was just talking about, the extra texture and that, that it will sort of add. Okay, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a blitz with the heat gun. For those of you watching the live where my newer heat gun started to die i have gone back i ha had to go and find it upstairs in storage my old trusty one that i've had for probably oof, probably 15 15 years something like that now it's only got one setting uh, i did like having the two settings but and on the two setting gun the higher heat definitely seemed to be hotter than this I'm faster than this, but can't beat old trusty to keep going. And at the end of the day, one of the heat settings on my new gun had died. And I couldn't take the risk that it would die when I'm trying to do something live. So, okay, that is, that is relatively dry, uh, but I'm going to set it aside for a minute anyway because I am going to, I've got a heart here, MDF heart, and I am going to paint this white also. And again, I'm using uh, the gesso on here. You could use acrylic rather than gesso. I do not, um, you do not need to prime the MDF. It's a good quality MDF. You do not need to prime it. I am painting it white with a primer because I want it white. Why am I not using a white acrylic? Yeah, I, I'm not surprised, Joan, because same as me, my newer heat gun that's died isn't that old. Now, I'm, I'm lucky it was gifted to me by the company that it came from, but they're a good company and I am going to contact them and 
you know, I, I'm not going to expect a, a replacement because they they kindly sent it to me for free. But I am going to let them know there was an issue because obviously, well, you know, they need to know that there's an issue. Um, and I, I loved it because it had the two settings. And more, more importantly, I loved it because it had a much longer uh, lead on it, which when you're on TV, they put the... Look, at the moment, my my thing is plugged in. There's an extension lead right by where I'm, I'm doing the demo. But when you're on TV, they have an extension lead sort of right under the bench, which is right low down, and that takes up pretty much the length of your lead. So as soon as you then go to dry anything, you can't you can't move it. So I loved it for the longer lead, but, yeah, it's, it's died a death. And this one, which was a cheap, it's not even a branded one. I mean, it's even got a brand. No, it's not even a branded one. It was cheap. And they, uh, yeah, it's got to be 15, 20 years I've had it. So, yeah. Old trusty it is. So. And I bet the Ranger one was a pretty penny as well. Um, okay, what was I saying? Okay, so what I was saying is, why am I not painting this with white acrylic? Well, white acrylic would certainly give a whiter look than gesso because gesso to me is never pure white um but again the reason i'm doing it with gesso is it does i don't need a pure white i'm going to put inks and stuff on top of this heart um so acrylic is more expensive than gesso so why waste the expensive thing on on something that's going to be pretty much covered up it gives the white color that i need and on top of that, um, and again, I'm going to put the heat gun on, so excuse excuse any noise. Uh, and on top of that, gesso, unlike acrylic, adds a little bit more of that tooth. And um, especially if yours has gone thick like mine, or you've got a thicker um, gesso, again, a bit more texture. So when I'm putting inks and stuff on, they will catch in that texture. And it will just make it look that little bit better. Okay. So just giving that a quick dry. Okay. Really, I need to get the ink out of there because that is going to bug me. Ink, paint, same difference. Well, it's not the same difference at all, really, is it? Yeah, that's that's the same, Jay. Isn't it funny how the non, non-branded non ones last us so much longer, have, have sort of really sort of done us proud as such? Um, okay, what next? Okay, so now I'm going to go back to... Oh, I'm just going to give it a wipe. I won't give it a proper wipe because I can clean up after. Okay. So I'm going to put my heart to the side. Um, it is pretty much dry. I'm going to let it finish off drying the rest of the way. But I don't want it to get any of the splats or that on that I'm going to, going to be doing with this. So let me just get my bits out. That sounds absolutely wrong. Okay. Um, can you still hear me? I'm paranoid. Um, can you still... All right, it's okay. I'm just, I've just, I keep taking it off. I keep taking it off mute so I can hear myself. Um, after doing a whole hour or 45 minutes live the other day with no sound, uh, I'm really quite paranoid now. <sighs> okay. Right. I have got... Speckled egg and salvage patina. Um, the speckled egg always comes out quite light. And the salvage patina, far more um, oomph behind it. I don't want it all oomph, but I don't want it all sort of pow. So the two together are good. I really need to get myself some um, yellowy sort of distressed distress sprays or a spray of some sort all i could find in my box of goodies is this which is blazing sun and it's actually uh because it's a lindy stamp gang one which i've had for absolute years it's actually mica in there so that's actually shimmery which i don't really want but then at the same time it's only going to add to it and because i haven't got a yellowy sort of spray of color that i want um i've got my distress oxide pad right i need to calm <sighs> take a deep breath i need to calm slow down what i'm saying then i won't keep erming as much and people might be able to keep up with me i 
keep forgetting. I talk awfully fast, especially when I'm nervous. Okay, so because I haven't got a spray, I've got an oxide, and instead I will use um, a flicking technique to get it on there. Okay, so the first colour I'm going to go in with is my speckled egg. Now I'm going to hold it back a bit, so you might not see me holding it back because I kind of... And then what I'm going to do... So what you could see I was doing there is I held it up, so the sprays around the edge are very fine. And as I got closer, the droplets got bigger. All right, so... Um, Great way to get a different, I don't know if you can see all of that on there. Great way to get different size splotches very easily is to hold it higher and bring it closer. And that will change the size of your splats. And now I'm going to, I'm just taking it off and putting some bigger splats on. Now I'm going to do a bit with the salvage patina. And I'm barely touched that I don't want it all over I want the speckled egg the muted color to be the one but can you see there's just little pops of that in there now because what I want is I want the speckled egg to be the main color and I want the um, salvaged patina to just be the pop of color now really ultimately with uh, distress inks or sprays or stuff like that when you spray them like this and you've got the blobs of colour really you want to let them dry naturally because if I dab it off with a tissue it's going to lift most of the colour off when I dry it with the heat gun I might have the perfect splatter and be really pleased with it you dry it with a heat gun and it moves it around and obviously when it moves it around it, it ends up not quite as you wanted it um, so really the best thing to do is let it dry naturally now obviously when you're trying to do a project live you haven't really got the time to let it dry naturally and more importantly if you're not um if you're not doing a project live even if you're doing it at home if you're anything like me i'm so impatient i don't want to wait for it to dry naturally if i've got another stage of the project to go and get on with good but that's never normally enough time to let it dry hi sarah lou okay so i didn't necessarily Want that blob there now I am thinking of putting something there anyway so I'm not too fussed that I've kind of messed it up a bit there but I'm also going to add other colors first anyway actually if I go back with a little bit of that's it that covers that up nicely it's where I lifted it to shut to bring it closer to the camera it sort of twisted it sideways and uh, pulled the colour together which made like a blob rather than spray so this is that one that's got the shimmer in it which isn't one I'd necessarily use I don't even know if you'll be able to see that in the camera can you see the little yellowy splotches and just want to dry some of that water up and now also I'm going to use a Distress Oxide. So this is using one of our um, acrylic blocks. So if you've got a piece of plastic, um, if you've got your acrylic blocks, this is, this is one of the smaller sizes that come in there. So I'm going to give that a bit of a spritz. Actually, I'm going to hold it away from my work because this is... This is Distress Inks, remember. So if I get it wet, it's going to move it. So I have put my... Distress Oxide on there straight off the ink pad. I've given it a spritz just with water and I'm going to load the brush up with it and flick it on. Okay. And again, really, I'm, I'm sort of... I'm trying to focus more around here because this is where I'm going to... This is where I'm thinking I'm going to put my objects in that. So this is kind of where I want the main bit of colour. Okay. So if you haven't got a spray stain um, or a spray in the colour you want, have a look through your pads, ink pads, see what you've got. You might have something there that will that you can use instead. It does mean you won't get the really fine uh, misting that I've got around the edges here. 
but you will at least be able to get some colour. Okay, so I feel it needs a little bit more there. Now, and some more bigger blobs. I don't know, it just didn't. That's better. And just remember with that, that's the speckled egg. Then another, oh, with the salvage patina, just to lift it again. So there is colour all over. You might not be able to see that in the um, camera. That there is colour all over, but round the edge it's a real fine mist of the colour. And then as we get in, basically it's getting darker and more concentrated on colour uh, as we as we come in. And what that does is, is this is the area where I'm thinking that I'm going to put my bits. That sounds really really rude. Sorry. Um, this is the area where I'm thinking I'm going to put my embellishments and stuff. And to have the colour sort of more solid underneath where you're going to put stuff it it makes it um it makes it you know draw your eye in it brings your eye sort of into it so for anyone that was um going to be tuning in at one o'clock today or for anyone that's going to be watching this on replay because they were hoping to watch something at one o'clock and I then wonderfully said oh completely forgot I thought it was at, I thought it was at seven so I'll have to do it at seven uh, yeah I really really apologize I couldn't get on at one I would have once I did realize it was one o'clock I would have done one o'clock um, if I could but we happen to have workmen in today uh, just you know adding a few vents to some of our windows and that the house gets it's an old house and it sort of gets uh, it can get really damp it's been much better obviously since we've been living there and we've had heating and stuff like that but obviously if we can um, get things like that done and a bit of loft insulation in one side of the house in the other side of the house you can't even get in the loft it's so tiny <laughs> it's so tiny it's like a tiny crawl space um, so yeah I really couldn't take time away from that anyway what's what has everyone been up to what is everyone working on at the moment what's your main craft that you're into at the moment Okay, so it's quite nice actually. Where I've used the Lindy Stamp Gang. Hi Louise. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Sarah, because obviously I am a nightmare and changing the time last minute means not a lot of people sort of know. So thank you very much. It's really, really appreciated. You know, anytime anyone sort of shares anything or recommends the videos, I mean, as most of you that have been watching my lives you know that, that I'm still I'm not I'm not new to live tv but it's different when you've got a presenter and that there but doing lives myself at home oh craft cabin that sounds wonderful just the fact that you put the word craft cabin sounds fantastic <laughs> but I don't envy anyone that decides to sort out a craft area because most of us have far too much stuff and it always is a mammoth task if we need to sort it out. I've got a little area at the end of my workshop that's a little bit separate to uh, the workshop. And still, um, I haven't sorted it out. Playing with resin and the new Pentart cr oh, chrome powders and dipping pa paint. That sounds uh, interesting. What is, what is chrome powders, Joan? I'm guessing a bit like mica powder, is it? Um, okay, so that is still a little bit damp. I'm going to set it aside to finish off drying and I'm going to move on to the next bit. Okay, so what do we have next? Let's, let's work on the heart. So I am going to take my salvaged patina, I think, or shall I go for the darker speckled egg? Mm. I think I'll go for the salvaged patina so what I want to do here with my heart is I want to get the streak 
Um, hi, Judith. I want to get a streak sort of running down and maybe one running up. So what I'm going to try and do is, is where the nozzle of the spray is, I'm going to try and sort of, you watch now, it's going to hit the top and it's going to go off in funny directions. But what I'm going to try and do is actually hit the top so it runs down on, rather than sort of spray it on. It is and it has a chrome effect. Oh, they sound lovely. Just like 24 tubs of... <laughs> Mind you, 24 tubs of flower soft, even if you even if you do use it, seems a lot of flower soft. In all fairness, I've got some tiny little... I don't even know whether they are, some tiny little tubs of... I don't know if it's flower soft or something very similar. And they've been sat in a box. I've never, ever used them, ever. I need to use them. I need to start... Uh, using more stuff right so this is either going to hit the top and go everywhere or it is going to um, dribble down so and that's kind of the effect that I want for it to go down and then I'm just going to hold it up so it runs down and then I'm going to go back try and move it over a little bit and then back and then what I want to do is I'll run it up and as it pulls at the top, I'll touch it on the edge of my kitchen roll. And that takes it off, okay? Because what I don't want it to do is I don't want it to meet the bottom of the heart. I want it to be a run coming down the heart. So I need to take it back on itself, which is what I did. But then it all pulls at the top. So just touch it. Don't wipe it because then you end up with that white, you know, you'll wipe it off the edge. Just touch it on your kitchen roll and it'll take it off. So let's try again. And the idea with this is because I don't, it doesn't matter if you have some little splats, but I don't want big splats. Okay. And then let's try one from um, bottom angle there. Okay, quite happy with that. And then I'm going to, so while that is still wet, uh, uh, I'm going to use some alcohol ink. Now this is butterscotch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it right next to where I've just added that ink. Where it is wet from the ink, it will help it travel and go downwards okay if you need to add a bit of water add a bit of water now what this will do is you will find that your ink tries to follow the path of your uh, spray that you've used down it so encourage it to move over a little bit but let it mix in because it just creates a nice sort of variation that's it Okay, and then when they mix in together, it can sort of create some really nice looks. Let's add a bit down here. And the reason I've got um, butterscotch is because it was the... What I'm trying to do is tonally keep all the colours the same or very similar. So um, I didn't actually have... I didn't actually have a yellow of any sort other than the butterscotch. So that is why I've gone for this colour. Detlin, it was a sea theme porthole stand. Oh, I'm certain you did. And uh, my memory is terrible at remembering what make and takes we've done over the years. All I know is, is every make and take we've done at every show, I've loved and people have loved and I've loved what people have made. And porthole, what do we do with a porthole? Hmm, I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember what it looked like. But yeah, I must admit, I, I do miss doing the shows and I am still torn as to whether... Um, whether we will sort of do the shows again have any of you started going to the shows now now that most of them sort of seem to be back on or is everyone sort of still playing it safe and right so i think here where uh see where this one's bright green i don't like it this bright green color so i am gonna 
and this is just water in this bottle it's just water okay so oh, that's better i didn't like the bright green i don't mind bits of bright green but i don't want all bright green um there oh, that's great made my ink leak i wipe it up before it gets over everything not yet still playing it so yeah that's what i'm doing at the moment i'm i'm playing it safe and i also uh we've used all the grid walls in the little shop area that we're going to have here it's my first ever mixed media project now i can't <laughs> oh that is excellent sarah that that makes me really really happy that you know the, the thing we try and and do with the um with the shows which you'll know if, if you've done uh, one yourself and excuse the heat gun again everyone um is we try and make it accessible for everyone so uh not just do we make the try and make the projects and i wouldn't say simple because then that you know that might undermine what people are doing but as fun and as accessible as possible and you know to let people know that they don't have to have you don't have to have all the expensive stuff like we were saying joan with the guns our cheap guns are the ones that are still doing us proud um but you know you don't have to have all the expensive stuff you don't have to um have everything that's going you can there's always something else you can use instead it's always something you can do it's like i say i wanted a yellowy color um spray haven't got one so i've used my ink pad and i've doubled that up uh, to do the flicks yeah i'm oh no shows for you either yeah the thing is I, I i for me as a supplier um so i'll work i'll, I'll carry on working while i'm talking because i'm conscious of time otherwise uh so um let me just see what i'm doing before i carry on talking so i have got i was going to do put crackle paint on and then do all this on top problem is me and crackle paint and crackle paste do not mix uh but i am just rubbish at getting crackles and um that's all right susan and it, things are always on replay so if you if you miss when i'm on they're always on replay um and the thing with crackles they're lovely because you know bits can get in and in and out of the crevices and it's great but if you put crackle paste on as well really the best way to get your crackles is to leave it to dry naturally and unfortunately i would have to uh, air dry it and i know it won't crackle because like i said me and crackles don't mix so um i have a i don't it's like a cracked paint um stamp i've had it for a very long time i think it was an andy skinner one i don't know it's not been in its pack for a very long time it was this one and i don't know where it is but one that looks like scratches not scratches like someone's scratching to get out of something, but, uh, you know, scr scuffs and scratches. So they're two fantastic stamps for sort of adding some texture. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp this on the back to give it the effect of um, being <sighs> cracked paint without having to do the cracks. Um, so, yeah, for me, it's, so what I was going to say is for me as a supplier to do the shows... Not only are the stands normally really expensive. I'm using smoky grey ink, by the way, not black. If you've only got black, stamp it on. Stamp it off on a piece of paper before you stamp it on so that you've got a lighter impression. Um, yeah, not only are the stands normally sort of really expensive, but, the you know, we normally have to sort of stay in hotels overnight. It's the fuel. Um It's just there's so much work behind it. It's absolutely exhausting. Uh, you know normally staying away from family stuff like that because they're normally sort of shows that last a couple of days and and they don't necessarily well we never did and that's probably because our prices are what they are we never made a, a great deal we were lucky if we sort of covered our costs really when we done the shows but for me the buzz the buzz of the show seeing people getting feedback on stuff oh wow I, I used to say to my husband you know it's worth all of the ha you know all the heartache and work and whatever else involved in getting to the show it's just worth it for seeing people it just especially when you you you're a sort of sole business person as such in a workshop on your own um you get it's, it's quite isolating and then that's partly me and um, the depression and anxiety i suffer as well i can sort of isolate myself but when i go to the shows it's just fantastic like i said to my husband it kind of boosts me for months before I do the next show, it's, it is great. So part of me really does want to get back to them. And then the other part thinks, 
do I want all of that <laughs> that work? So all I've done now is add the crackle stamp and straight away it's changed how that heart looks. Completely changed it. So if you had crackles in there, I would suggest that you would give it a black um, underlayer, your crackle 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 paint to be in the white so that when it cracks you can see the black underneath so you get a similar effect and then put the sort of colors on but yeah i mean that completely for me completely changes how the heart sort of looks it's probably uh slightly off i'm going to put a couple of drips on now of this because it's probably slightly gone off the color that matches with the background so I kind of feel like I need to bring that back in a bit yeah I, I absolutely love if you like mixed media I would definitely recommend looking into a crackle like a paint um, crackle effect and uh, the scratch even the scratch one doesn't look much as a stamp but it is really great and like I say, I think them, I don't even know if you can still get them. These are so old, these stamps. So I put this back on because I do feel as much as it was too blue, the stripe before, I feel I've lost, because don't forget it's going on this, this background piece. I just felt it lost, lost the colour that sort of pulled them together. And I don't want to veer, veer too far away. I'm not going for a contrast, a complete contrast. I want a bit of a contrast, but I'm sort of trying to keep them together. So the other thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to use a salvaged patina distress ink and hope that I've dried it all. And I'm just going to go around the edges. Sim <laughs> Cough syrup, hun. <laughs> well, I hope he's got some now. <laughs> and hello, Dominique. Yeah, I love crackle glaze and paste, Sarah, when other people use it. Because if I do it like I'll someone who use a crackle paste or paint and it'll look phenomenal and I think oh right I'll go for that one what, what's that one they're like oh it's so easy to use what's that one I get it nothing no I don't know what I'm doing wrong I can follow instructions to the T and yeah they just hate me so this this stamp for many many years has been my best friend okay so I'm just putting this around the edge and again, this helps. It's softer than the inks, uh, that you know, than the spray inks. But it helps, um, you know, keep that colour similar to the background that we're going to put it on. And it helps sort of pull it in. And also, I found this. Again, something that I've had for a long time. Can't say I've been that uh, in love with them. But this is um, Op Opal Magic Wax from Prima. And it's turquoise satin, but it doesn't really. It's uh, one of them colours. If you put it on black, it comes out a really nice turquoise colour. Oh, picked raspberry. I don't think I've got any picked raspberry. So I've got bright pink um, dilutions, which I absolutely love. But I haven't got any picked raspberry. But yeah, this salvage patina, I'm absolutely loving. I loved cracked pistachio when they bought it out, and I find the two very, very similar. Um, just checking through the things. I just. Uh, uh, so if you put it on black, it actually comes out quite a turquoise uh, colour. But when you put it on white or on other colours, it, it comes out more the colour that you can see in the pot. So you can see hints of the turquoise in there. If you put that on black, I don't know if I've got any black. Well, I think it does if I remember rightly. Yeah, so if I put that on black... You see how that's really sort of turquoise on the black. But when you put it on other colours, it comes out the sort of more creamy colours, but with just a slight hint of the turquoise. Now, I'm just... The only place I'm rubbing this is just at the edge here, and then I'm going to do it at the diagonal edge there. So, you know where people say, oh, work in threes. You know, it's good to work in threes, um, which isn't always the case, and you don't always have to. Uh it's also good to work in diagonals. It sort of balances it and sort of keeps things looking okay. So it's just to, again, all I'm doing is just giving it a different contrast, still a similar colour, still the same sort of colour palette, but just again, 
tonally changing it a little bit making it a little bit different to add a little bit of texture okay so this will end up going on here so I'm starting to be happy with how that uh, looks okay so what else have I got in my pot these are the bits that I have in my pot hmm okay so this is what I was thinking I'm going to use these bits as a background piece behind there but I really want them to stand out so I am going to and the same as these I'm going to put these on the heart but I want them to stand out so with all these pieces I am I'm going to emboss these white now I really 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 need to find I've got bright white somewhere but I cannot find it for the life of me I cannot find it I mean this heart if I'd done that in a bigger size um that's quite a big heart but if I'd done that in a bigger size like I could just put like a little word on it whatever else and I'd I'd be happy to hang that up but then they're my sort of colours it's sort of it's not a rusty colour but it kind of is I use butterscotch sometimes when I'm rusting things up so um right this is a an an MDF cog as is this and I need to find my bright white because I don't have a clue where it is but for now I, all I have is seafoam white which is more a creamy colour than a white but needs must and it will still do what I need it to do okay let's move these out of the way and then so I'm just pushing this is chipboard now so that was MDF this is chipboard I'm pushing them straight into the embossing pad and then I am sprinkling over the embossing powder oh and that one's buried okay and then for this one because it's a big piece i think i'm going to need to put it back in love the just embossing glazes give such a great yeah do you know what i've got a whole batch of the embossing glazes and i still haven't used any yet are they, are they you're on about the embossing glazes where when you put them over they kind of add a color to it but um are still see-through as such oh, that's my bright white <laughs> Joan, you like my craft, my craft twin. Both of our expensive guns have gone to have gone to pot, and we're using older ones and or cheaper ones. And both have lost our bright whites, and I've got sea foam. Just glad I got the sea foam. I don't have nothing. I don't even know why I've got sea foam. I must have bought it one year when I couldn't get a bright white. It's not really a colour that I use for anything. It does go whiter than what it is in the pot, which is something. Now, I might, um, if I haven't quite got enough embossing powder, uh, brr, embossing ink on stuff, I might have to add a bit more embossing powder, but we will see. And again, because it's a mixed media project, don't forget, if it doesn't go um, perfectly white and there's little bits that have been missed and stuff like that in there, sometimes it doesn't really matter sometimes that actually adds to it because it just adds more texture and stuff yeah i i saw them used um sarah and i did think oh wow i think they'll be really cool um and i did that's why i got them and yeah i've just still not used them yet i've got another live tomorrow so maybe i will get them out and have a play right so these are chipboard so they're more likely to move when i'm heating it so i will hold them with a brush or something so these could probably do with a bit more um embossing powder on can you see there i don't know if you can see in the thing uh 
can you see the little speckles on some parts of it where it's not quite covered it enough do you know what i could add more on there or i could leave it like that i'm going to leave it like that because it's it has got a grungy sort of feel to it and that and you know it just shows not everything's got to be perfect but if you wanted a more solid color on there two things you could either um push them bits back on your pad and then add some more or whilst that's still wet like heat it a little bit sprinkle your embossing powder on then and tap it off because the embossing stuff that's already on there that's melted will help hold it on and then you can sort of heat the new stuff and it will bring it back in but like i say i, I quite like the little mottled, mottled effect that it's given it and again if you haven't got embossing powders uh to use to make this white paint them white um you know it, it, you don't need to use an embossing powder i've used an embossing powder because again it's another texture it's another effect like when you don't quite it doesn't quite cover it properly uh in most cases embossing powder is gives it a bit of a shine and a sheen so again it's just another texture but if you haven't got embossing powder paint it white okay Uh, just having a look back through uh, some of the messages. Sarah, have you found your gra grand old Duke stencil? Oh, that sounds interesting. On the black and white and them old styles. Close. Too um, right, so let me move this aside. And let me move that aside. And let me move that aside. And put the lid on that before I knock it over okay so I'm quite happy with how they are um, so they're my white pieces so what I've done is is I've done the two pieces that are going on there white then the next layer is going to be color and then the next layer on top of that is going to be white again so that's what I'm thinking just to give it some lift between each um, layer oh, I've got bits of embossing powder <laughs> everywhere <laughs> Right, okay. So on here, where I'm thinking of having this, I now want to think about using a stencil. And I'm going to use a little bit of uh, black soot distress ink. And what I'm going to think about is I'm going to put just a little bit on. Again, you know, like I said, diagonal. So I've done these two diagonals with the wax. So I'm going to go for probably these two diagonals with the stencil. And... Um, you know, it doesn't matter if it goes under where the heart's going to go or around where the hearts are going to go. Oh, yeah, I love script stuff. I've got script stamp stamps that have got legs and gone and grown. Oh, what a moulding with these. We do these as chip chipboard pieces, but, yeah, I'd like a mould like in these, actually. Perhaps I will uh, speak to someone I know that makes moulds. <laughs> Um, okay, so I am going to add a little bit at the diagonal there. Oh, it's probably a bit much. I think I should have stamped off first. Okay, oh, so that's it. That's all I'm going to do. Just add another, another bit of, um, you know with with mixed media for me and mixed media is different for everyone and don't forget it doesn't have to be the same for everyone um because that's the joy of crafting that is the joy of mixed media but mixed media for me is about it's about and it's not always about color either because you can have a uh, very monochrome pieces a fantastic mixed media so color is great in mixed media but i wouldn't say uh it's what mixed media is for me for me mixed media is about textures and layers um you know layering stuff up because it's just it's just joyful you know putting the different layers on and whatever else and that's what craft's meant to be is joy you know we're meant to enjoy it um yeah it's layering stuff up and textures you know if there's different stuff not necessarily to touch and feel but to look at and you think oh look at that in there and look at that in there and you know the my most favorite mixed media pieces <sighs> that people have have done are pieces <sighs> Are pieces where you spot one thing one second and then something something the next second and that doesn't have to be because it's a really full piece or busy piece it could just be because you didn't realize these had a slight sheen to them or you didn't realize that oh, there was a bit of ink 
you know, showing under there. That that to me is what mixed media is, is just that, that discovery for the person um, afterwards. Okay, so what are we going to do next? Um, so again, if I've got these here layered up, I think now I am going to use... This is my All and Create A4 stamp. Uh, it seems to be coming out a lot at the moment because I have lost most of my mixed media stamps. So um, this is, I'm having to use this one quite often uh, until I find them. So this time I'm going in with a black. Uh, you know, the other bits are greys or where you've where I've used a black soot ink there. It's It's all softer colours this is going to be you know black as black as intended um and what I've done is I've tried to just highlight that one circle and again I'm going to use my heart and think well where's that going to go and then I want that sticking out there okay and then the same again at the top so I'm going to do it again so I am stamping because I'm just using that one portion of the stamp I'm not using a stamp pad because I don't mind if parts are missing and that that's part of the effect I want I'm stamping the bit I want and then wiping off where I think I might have got ink so I just get that bit if you don't want to have to wipe it off afterwards you could use a bit of masking tape around there so when you stamp it on pull your masking tape off and then stamp and there won't be any ink it you know anywhere else um so there are different ways to sort of do it and again i'm going for the top corner behind where the heart will be just give it a little rub okay so that for me is that done so when i have started to layer that up you can start to see what i'm going for i'm going for sort of the diagonals behind okay so let's start layering this up so Let's put that there and that there like that. Oop, I want that down more. If you're not happy, so I don't actually think I want all of that on there. So what I'm gonna do because it's stopping me putting this where I want it. So I'm going to cut that off. So I've got that now for another project. And because it was stopping me pushing this over enough to be under the heart enough that I'm happy with it. Oh, that's better. Uh, so do I do it that way? Oh, yeah. Okay, so when you've got it in a position that you are happy with it, using a gel medium or a glue, you're going to stick these down. So I'm trying not to move them too much. This is a uh, dry as clear glue, so I'm not too worried if it does squirt out of the sides a little bit. And that. My fingers are a bit sticky, so it's sticking to my fingers. Okay. So let's go here. Sorry, what stamp is that, please? The dog wanted to go out. <laughs> uh, what stamp? So that one is this one. Um, it's number 56. I don't think it's got... Oh, Vintage Graffiti. So the nice thing is with this, you know, you can use just the butterfly bit or just the skull or the circles, which is what I seem to use all of the time, or bits of the script. Um, yeah, I really do love it. And the nice thing is with an A4 stamp is it can make a great background, but you, it, it does give you lots of little bits to choose from. So um, I do need to get myself more all and create stamps because they are wonderful. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't really get into craft that much so there was no point invest investing in yet more stuff um 
but now I'm doing the lives more often, so I'm crafting more often. I think I will invest in some. So I'm just going to position that where I'm happy and stick it down. And then again, where the cogs are going to go on here. I'm not going to stick them down until I know where my next piece is going. So, okay, at the moment, it's still looking a little bit bare here. And I've got the little, this little, it's like a uh, tiny little dots. I guess it's a thing that I call it. And again, I'm going back to the grey because I don't, I want these to be, um, you know, quite bright because they're sort of behind the things. But I, I want it to stay softer because I'm moving out again. You know, where everything else softens, the spray, everything else softens as I go out. I also want this, this to be softer as it goes out. So I'm going to do it in a grey. Again, no stamp pad. And I'm going to just add... And again on these diagonals. Do I need it anywhere else? Meh. I don't know. For now I'm alright with that, I think. Okay, so I have got this. And what I want to do with this is create a piece to go on there. So I'm going to use... This would be my final piece to go on. Some of that wax on the cogs would look luscious. It would, and I would use it on the cogs, but because I'm going to put something on top of the cogs, um, I want to keep that colour, white, colour, white, colour. If I wasn't putting anything uh, on top of the cogs, I would probably use a wax or some of the um, stain or some of the distress ink pad around the edges of the cogs just to give him something else so uh, this is a speckled egg so I'm giving that a spritz all over with a speckled, speckled egg and I'm going to give it a dry and this is um, we do these arrows in MDF but I wanted, I didn't want another, I've got the MDF heart and obviously the MDF is thicker than the um, chipboard and I didn't want another really thick layer on top. Don't forget I've got, um, I've already got chipboard underneath and then two layers of MDF with the heart and the cogs. So I didn't want yet another layer of MDF because it would lift the height up uh, too much really for what I wanted. So uh, that's why I've gone for the chipboard arrow. And the chipboard arrow uh, don't come as separates. The MDF ones do. Um, but they do come in our arrow set. Which also comes with lots of different types of arrows. And a journal and stuff like that. So, right, we've got that. And then I'm going to take... So, I'm going to get... So, this is the antique linen. So, this is the one, remember, that at the start... <laughs> that's all right Sarah and it's good to it's good to share stuff like that because um if I hadn't thought of it it's it's, it's a great thing to do if someone else uh, was doing a project and they might not want to add the arrow on top they might sort of be content with that I mean that I quite like that as a project just like that on its own um so they might think oh yeah I'll add a bit of the wax so it's always good to to share and say stuff um so this is the antique linen. Remember, this is the colour that I put on the edge of the acrylic block and flicked on there to get some colour. Well, now I'm just going to press it in places over the arrow so that the arrow now starts to pick up some of that colour as well. Okay. Now, uh, this is an oxide. And the thing to remember with, it, with using an oxide, you couldn't really use a distress ink for this bit here. Uh, because it doesn't really layer up in the same way as oxide does. So uh, the oxide will go on top of the spray and, and you can see it on top of the spray because that's the nature of an oxide. But I also want, because this is a top piece, so the same as uh, with the bottom piece in the heart, we did we did um, put a bit of the salvage patina in to help it pop here and there. I'm going to use the next... I haven't got any other yellows or oranges, so I'm going to, other than wild honey, so I'm going to use a bit of that on this as well, and that will just add, uh, hopefully, add something to give it a bit of a, 
a bit of a pop. Um, don't forget if you're not, if it's a bit too bright, take it down. So this is, oh, let me move the pad out of the way and you might be able to actually see it. Okay, so it's got bits of the orange on it now. Can you see on the back there? I love how this looks on the back. So it's just all sort of textured in that again. And again, you are going to uh, glue. Actually, I can't put the glue on yet because I don't know where it is. So this is why I need the, so about there, I think. Okay, yeah, so we'll stick the cogs there. Um, and stick these on. And we are nearly at the end. So if there's any questions you've got, anything you want to know, anything you want to see, say. I will try and read the comments after. So if anyone's... Oh, that's a bit much glue. If anyone's watching it on replay, um, I'll see what they're putting. Oh, that bit of glue in there will, will dry clear, but it will bug me. So I will take it out. And then I'm going to add that. Actually, I'm not. I am still too... It's not lifted enough. I need something else. So I'm going to use some bits of salvaged patina. Let's see if that helps. I'll probably hate it now. I wish I hadn't have done that. But then, like I say, I quite like that like that. I think it looks quite striking with the white there against the colours. Um, yeah, let's put, I need a bit more glue. I think I might actually prefer it without the arrow or need to rethink the colours on the arrow. But for now, I had intentions of putting it on, so I will. And that is pretty much it. So I don't know if you can see that there. I will try and take a photo of it because the photo, it doesn't quite look the same as it does um, here, as it does in the camera. I think I probably, if I'm honest, I probably prefer it without the arrow. Uh... Or the arrow needs to have a little bit more oomph to help it sort of stand out from the background. I could sort of put something under here to help it stand out, but I don't really want to add to the background um, more. So I'm not sure, but I really wanted to use the arrow in there. I had one sort of sitting to the side. So if we can... And that... Is the piece and of course it looked just as good without the arrow on there but that is the piece so it's just a few layered a few layered up and like i said for this one instead of everything being inky and colorful we've gone for color uh with the different textures as such not being physical textures but being from inks and stamps and stencils and then we've gone for um a layer that's just white and then we've gone for another layer that's different colors and stamps and inks around the edge and a little bit of wax to sort of do the color bit and then again white and then a color on top so yeah i could try but shall i take the thing is the arrow is um chipboard so i don't want to saturate it too much let's see if i can get it off can i Ooh. let's try a bit of butterscotch on the arrow i need it if anything Around the edges like I need it to highlight the top and back of the arrow hmm. I think it's because the butterscotch is an alcohol ink it's just soaking straight into the chipboard yeah it definitely helps it stand out more 
Not, not. I still not sure. I'm struck on the arrow being on there. To be honest with you, I quite like it without, but um, it definitely helps the arrow stand out more. I sort of focused on the back and the front and some of the edges rather than the middle, just because they're the bits that need sort of lifting. But that is, yeah, good suggestion, Sarah. Thank you very much. There you go. And that, that everyone is that. Um, let me zoom in on it while I go and turn everything off. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, thank you, Susan. Thank you, Louise. Uh, thank you for everyone that's joined me. Thank you for anyone that watches this on replay. If you've got any questions, give me a shout. If there's ever anything you want to see, let me know. 